In this video, I'll show you how to create a table of contents in OneNote. I'll show you this in two different ways. First is the manual way, then an automatic way using a macro from OneTastic. Before we get into it, first let's explore why table of contents can be beneficial. One of the key benefits is turning OneNote into an easy to navigate resource of notes and information. Managing a large volume of information without a clear structure can be overwhelming, making it difficult to understand how different parts of your notes relate to each other. OneNote makes it easy to organize your notes by offering intuitive note structure, but a large collection of notes can still feel confusing and makes it hard to see how the parts connect. Having a table of contents provides a bird's eye view of your entire notebook structure, revealing their relationship between various sections and pages. It's not just about finding content, it's about understanding overall layout, hierarchy, and framework of your information, which helps in mental organization and planning. This overview is important for maintaining a functioning notebook and makes it easier to organize and place your future notes. This expands on the first point. Navigating through numerous pages and sections to find specific information can be time consuming and frustrating, especially when you're in a rush to find the information. OneNote's advanced search function does help, but keywords and phrases may return multiple results and it may take a few tries of narrowing your search parameters before you can filter down to find the notes that you actually need. With well thought out notes organization supported with a table of contents, you can jump directly to the relevant section or page with just a click, bypassing the need to manually sift through irrelevant content. Then you can use the control F function to find the keyword within the page. And this immediate access not only saves time, but also makes your workflow smoother and more efficient. Lastly, when sharing notebooks with your colleagues, classmates, or friends, they might not be familiar with the organization of your content, leading to confusion and frustration. A well-structured table of contents can serve as guide for collaborators, providing them with an intuitive map of the notebook's contents. This makes it easier for everyone to find what they're looking for and understand the overall layout and contribute effectively. It also ensures that even those who didn't create the notebook can navigate it with ease, making collaborative efforts more seamless and productive. Now that we understand how table of contents can be helpful, let's see how we can set them up. You can create a table of contents for virtually everything within OneNote you can create a table of contents for each notebook or each section within a notebook. And if you have a really long note page with a bunch of information, you can create a table of contents within a page as well. So let's say we want to create a table of contents for this notebook called areas. By the way, I'm using the Tiago Forte's para method to organize my notebook. So this notebook areas contain all the different areas of my life that I'm maintaining. So I will go to my inbox section and create a new page and label it table of contents or TOC. Now what I can do is I can right mouse click on each of the sections, click on copy link to section, go back, and then paste. I'm just using control V. And you can see that a live link has been created. If I click on it, it takes me to the food and entertainment section within the notebook. This time, instead of hitting the back arrow to go back, I'll just click on inbox because that's where I have the table of contents created. And I'll just repeat. I'll go to the second line. This time I will right mouse click on YouTube ideas click on copy link to section and then go back and paste. So this can get a little tedious because we're going back and forth to add these links for the table of contents. Another way you can do this is by going to the insert tab, clicking on link and then navigating to the different sections. So here I'm going to choose kids, Click OK, enter, link again, this time health, OK. So 
you could keep doing this until you have all of the sections within the notebook created. Now, if you want to change the name of any of these links to be a little more descriptive, you could right click on the link and choose edit link. And you can change the text to display. And hit OK. That doesn't actually change the name of the section. It just changes the display name of the text. So if I click on it, it still takes me to the kids section. Again, just as a reminder, you're not limited to creating table of contents just for sections. You can create table of contents for pages and page groups as well. So for example, if I were to create a link to my car maintenance section, and if I navigate to it, you'll notice that I have different page groups laid out and I want to include these as part of my table of contents. So what I'll do is, in this case, it probably makes sense to nest. So I'm going to choose Alt, Shift, and right arrow to nest, then choose Link, and navigate to Car Maintenance, click on the plus sign so that I could expand the content, and I'll choose, uh, for example, the lease, hit Enter, go to Link again, car maintenance, then choose registration, click on it. So now when I use the link, it'll take me to that section and it'll highlight the page group. I can click on the arrow to expand to see the actual notes that are nested underneath. Now when you're finished with creating all of the links, your table of contents might look something like this. Now we can click the container and we can choose the number list. Now we have a decently formatted table of contents. It makes it easy to navigate. Yes, we do have the navigation pane here where you can see all of the sections, but as this list grows, it will get overwhelming. So if you have a table of content that you're managing on a page like this with a nice organization structure, I find it easier to first see at a glimpse what you have in your notebook and also to help navigate to the different sections. As you can see, setting this up does take a little bit of manual effort up front, but once everything is set up, the maintenance becomes quite simple. One thing to keep in mind, however, is if you were to rename any of the sections or pages, the link does get broken, so you'll have to reestablish those links. If you want to be able to create table of contents automatically, one of the options is to download one of the macros from OneTastic. We're on their main web page. This program does cost money, so if you go to the pricing tab, you'll see that the pro version costs $15 per year, which I don't think is too bad. The free version will let you download up to 20 macros and execute them up to 500 times. Now going back to the home page, we can try the button that says try OneTastic for free. And then you'll be presented with two download options, one for 32-bit and the other for 64-bit. If you're not sure, click on this link and you can choose the OneNote version that you're using. Uh, so in my case, it's Microsoft 365. And it'll walk us through finding out which version we need to download. You can see for me, it's going to be 64-bit. So we'll navigate back to the previous page and choose download one task 64 bit. Then you have to agree with the license terms and click on download again. And it's a very small file, so it downloads very quickly. I'm going to click open. Once the installation is complete, you can click on start OneNote. Okay, and I'm going to close out of this what's new in one tastic window that pops up. And then if you look up top in the home tab, you'll see ribbons that have been added, one for one tastic and one for macros. Since we don't have any macros downloaded yet, I'm going to click on download macros. Now you see that there are a bunch of macros available from macro land, but we will choose table of contents or TOC in this case and I'll choose TLC and current notebook. You do have a few different options like current page and current section, but for the sake of today's example, let's choose current notebook. And then we'll click on install 
and it just takes a few seconds. And you have the option to change the icon of the macro. In this case, I'm just going to leave it alone and hit close. Now I can click on show installed macros. And of course, it's the only one that we have. I'll close out of this window. And you can see that the TOC icon has been added to the ribbon. Now let's try using the macro. I'm going to navigate to my inbox section. This is where we had created the table of contents manually. I'm going to create a new page. And now I'm going to go to my TOC macro and add table of contents in current notebook. Now it gives me a few different options. Um, the first option is for link generation mode. So you have the option for fast or resilient. Fast, as the name suggests, this is going to create the table of contents very fast and quickly. If you choose a resilient mode, when you rename your note pages or sections or section groups, it'll maintain the link. So this makes it easier to maintain going forward. It does take a little while uh, to generate resilient links. Uh, for us, I'm just going to choose fast. And then the scope. So this is trying to create the table of contents for this entire notebook. So you have the option to create table of contents using pages, sections, or section groups. I want it as granular as possible. So I'm going to choose pages in this case. And it's also asking if you want the table of contents to be able to be collapsed, yes or no. I'm just going to say no. And TOC page mode, create a new table of contents page or update table of contents in current page. So I'm going to choose create new. Now I'm going to click on OK. And just within a second, look at this, right? So I have a very robust table of contents because I chose the page option. It's really giving me links to every single page that's within my current notebook, my areas notebook, and it's maintaining the nesting hierarchy. So if I were to go to my insurance section, for example, it takes me there and then I can expand it to the specific note page. So if you have lots of different notes with different sections, it's definitely worthwhile checking out the macro from OneTastic. Okay, that's it for today's video. I hope you found it helpful. If you're interested in learning more about OneNote, be sure to click on these videos next. Thanks.